Marnie, thank you so much for joining us. It's thank great you to have you here. Me. Yeah. Aspen. Aspen, beautiful, Pretty right? Awesome. Um, so let's start high level. You know, as you're building Instagram's business, there's so much curiosity about how Instagram and Facebook work together. How much are you collaborating with Facebook versus selling and charting your own path? The way I look at it is it's the best of both worlds. We have access to incredible resources. We are able to imagine having Mark and Cheryl on your board, and that's what it's like. Um, so we have access to these great resources. We're able to learn from a lot of people. Um, and we're also able to use a lot of the things that Facebook has built to power our growth uh, at Instagram. Having said all of that, we really do function in an autonomous kind of way. Uh, Kevin Systrom, our CEO, and Mike Krieger, who's co-founder, they started Instagram six years ago and they had a vision for Instagram and they really are still carrying out that vision and acting on that vision. And one of the things that I was most excited about in terms of coming to Instagram was to work with them, to work with the founders on um, developing Instagram and it's been an exciting time. It's hard to believe that it was just six years ago. Instagram's, you know, going past now 700 million users. What can Instagram offer advertisers that Facebook can't? Instagram is a great place for businesses. Um, but businesses really need to be on both platforms. Mm -hmm. So one in five mobile minutes is spent on both Facebook and Instagram combined. Mm -hmm. um, there are two billion people using Facebook and there are 700 million, as you said, using Instagram. So businesses really need to be on both. But what's interesting about the Instagram community is this, and that is that people in the community really want to hear from businesses. About half of our community, so or 80% of our community, mm -hmm. nearly half of our community connects with a business voluntarily. Mm -hmm. So they want to hear from businesses. So what we've been really focused on is helping businesses big and small um, advertise on uh, Instagram, advertise in feed, and now in Instagram stories. We just started in, uh, advertising there and helping businesses develop their presence and connect with new customers, but also connect more deeply with um, existing customers and we're seeing that businesses are finding great success on Instagram. So how would you rate the success of Instagram stories so far? I think it's been great. You know, if you think back a year ago at this time, Instagram stories did not exist and now there are 250 million people using it every day. So they are not just sharing their highlights, but they're also sharing all of their moments and telling their full story. That can come from businesses too. In fact, of the most watched stories on Instagram stories, a third come from businesses. And so what that shows is that people want to hear from businesses in feed, but also in Instagram stories. Now, Instagram may be the one Facebook platform where e-commerce actually works. And I know you guys are doing some experimentation there. You've got partnerships with J. Crew and Coach and Club Monaco. How, have, how is the progress there so far? It's been interesting. We just, we've started out and had some pilots. People come to Instagram, as I said, because they want to connect with businesses. They want to connect with their friends and family. Sometimes when people are coming, they want inspiration. Sometimes they want to be able to act. They see a great pair of shoes and they want to be able to buy those shoes. But when it comes to shopping, there's a journey in between. And I think that Instagram can play a great role in terms of helping to develop this. And I'll tell you, just this, um, you know, just this past year, we introduced the save button, a very simple button. And that was because what people were doing is they were screenshotting stuff that they had seen and they saved it for later, maybe for when they were planning a great trip to Los Angeles with a family or they found something, a sweater that they liked and they wanted to be able to return to it. And by providing them with the save button, it helped them uh, be able to organize and return to the things that they want, which is what the shopping experience is all about. Half our community has used that save, that save button and a third of what they've saved has come from a business. So between shopping ads and story ads, uh, what do you think is the most promising new ad product that you guys are working on so far? Well, I think it's still really early days in terms of um, Instagram stories and advertising on Instagram stories, but we're really excited by what we're seeing. We're, what we're seeing, we're really excited about the way people are using the video, the way they're using the full form, yeah. full format um, and the way that they are optimizing for mobile. I'll give you just one example 
uh, which is that um, Beats by Dre, you know, the, the headphones, Absolutely. what they did is they ran a lifestyle ad and they ran a product ad. And what they were able to do is experiment and see which worked better. As it turns out, the product ad worked better than the lifestyle ad, so they pulled it. And that's what people should be doing on mobile is doing more, moving faster, um, testing more. Instagram Stories provides that, but Feed does too. It's a great place for people to connect with. Uh, existing customers but also new ones. And what about when it comes to monetizing live video? Well, we just introduced live not too long ago and live is for broadcasting but really what we had in mind with respect to live was providing the, a way for people, groups of people, to have a feeling of hanging out together. When we were growing up you would call a friend on the phone and a couple other friends you'd open up a party line and that might have been how you shared stories with each other, but it also might have been how you did your homework. Live is that now. So we've just really started this. We've been excited by the way all different kinds of people are using live, and it really brings you closer to the people who you care about and the things that you care about through live. So I know you can't give me an exact number, but every quarter there are new guesstimates about how much Instagram is con contributing to Facebook revenue. Can you give me any idea on trends in terms of how meaningfully Instagram is contributing to the overall Facebook pie? Yeah, well, I think we have been growing. You said that our community is more than 700 million, 400 million people use it on a daily basis. Just two years ago, we opened up advertising, and now today we have one million active advertisers who are finding success not only in feed, but also with Instagram stories. We're working with businesses, big and small, to help them develop their presence on Instagram, and it seems to be going well. In fact, one of the best parts of my job is getting to travel around and meeting people who have started these businesses that are really growing on Instagram. So we think that there's this great opportunity, not only for the business, but also people in the community who really do want to get connected to things that businesses offer that connect with their interests. So you call it kindness technology. You've unveiled this whole AI campaign to combat online harassment. What kind of progress are you seeing so far? It's great. I mean, we have these the, these tools, Technology for Kindness. Last year, uh, or a few months ago, we introduced um, tools that helped you fil filter out uh, bad words in, um, in comments. And we've had, we've, we're now applying machine learning to comments. We've had a team of uh, people who are rating um, millions of comments uh, to help identify the most abusive types and be able to filter those out. It's early days of this, but we're really excited by what we're seeing because it is so important to have that kind, inclusive community so that people feel comfortable telling their stories. So as Instagram moves towards a billion users, what do you think are going to be the biggest challenges on the road ahead? I think making sure that we continue to listen to our community. Um, Six years ago, the community was a lot smaller. People have changed in the way they want to tell their stories. We have had to move and change um, in terms of being able to support them in the, the way that they want to tell their stories. It's really funny because if you, two years ago, when somebody suggested that we move from the square, the iconic square that's on um, Instagram, you would have thought that somebody had committed heresy. Mm -hmm. But what we saw is that people were looking to express themselves in different ways, use landscape or portrait type photos. Video is exploding on the platform. People want to use live. So the product has continued to change and as a company what we've had to do is get more comfortable with change. And I think it's great and Kevin Systrom, our CEO, has said that when you look at the companies that have been his successful historically, it's the ones that every two years or so have morphed and changed into something else. And so we've changed a lot, but I think that we're, we're, we're doing a pretty good job and we're excited about the way that we're supporting people in doing the things that they want to do on the platform. Snapchat is clearly struggling as Instagram adds new features. You know, what's your response to the people who say Instagram is copying Snapchat? It's a sad day for innovation. You know, what are you, what's your response to the sort of the critics out there? Well, we've been very public in terms of acknowledging that they invented the stories format. And it's a great format, and it's one that worked really well for our community. 
What happened is, is that when Kevin and Mike started Instagram, they wanted it to be a place where people shared all of their moments, not just their highlights. But as the community grew, it became harder for people to be able to do that. Maybe because of pressure around likes and comments, or maybe they didn't want it to interfere with some sort of a theme they had on their profile. So stories really solved a problem for people. And now 250 million people are using it on a daily basis to tell their stories. But the thing is, is that that's one feature and it actually works so nicely with the with feed and it works so nicely with Instagram direct and it works so nicely with all of the things that are happening in the community together. So we've been at this mobile visual communication for the past uh, six years and we're going to continue to do the things that help people in the community express themselves. Just last question. Do you think there's room for both Instagram and Snapchat in this world? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Marnie Levine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Great you for having me here today. Yeah.